Hi everyone, it's Michael. So I have a very fun problem for you guys today. Um, this one was posted by Parmenides on the Art of Problem Solving Forum. So thanks for posting it, Parmenides. Um, and it's from the Swiss, 20, I believe, 2017 Math Olympiad. So if you'd like to try to solve it, feel free to pause the video. All right. So we have an isosceles triangle ABC with vertex A, and AB is greater than BC. I think that condition is just to make the diagram easier. Um, so K is a circle with center A passing through B and C, and we can do that because triangle ABC is isosceles. Uh, H is the intersection of the altitude from B with the circle, and uh, G is the intersection of the median through B in triangle ABC to the circle. And we let GH meet AC at X, and we want to show that C is the midpoint of AX. All right. So I solved this problem using projective geometry, and there might be an easier way. Um, so if you guys can find an easier way, feel free to post it in the comments. Um, but this is how I did it, and um, projective geometry is still my favorite way of solving problems. Um, so how do we approach this? Um, so we want to show that C is the midpoint of AX. Um, and in order to kind of use projective geometry, uh, one useful way we could try to show this is by looking at the cross ratio ACMX. Because um, if we could compute that cross ratio, that would probably get us to this conclusion. Um, so how do we compute that cross ratio? Um, well, so a lot of times in my channel before, I've taken four points on a line and projected them through another point onto another line, and the cross ratio has to stay the same. But I've never on my channel projected them onto a circle. At least I don't think I have. But it's really cool. It's something you can do. So those four points, A, um, C, M, and X, uh, what I can do is I can project them through point G, but not onto a specific line, but rather I can project them onto the circle. So I'm going to show you how I'm going to do that. So I'm going to draw the lines through G through all four of those points, A, M, C, and X, and I'm going to see where it hits the circle. So G, A, I'm going to let it hit the circle at point B. Um, G, M hits the circle at B. Uh, G, C obviously hits the circle at point C, and G, X hits the circle at point H. Now, this, this kind of trick where you take the four points on a line and then you project them onto a circle, you can do it, but the point that you're projecting it through has to start on the circle. So G is on the circle, so that works. Um, so just as there was a cross ratio between A, C, M, and X, there's actually a cross ratio of B, C, B, and H, so those four points on a circle. And so I haven't defined exactly how to calculate it, but basically it would the number would be the same as uh, A, C, M, and X. And what's cool is once you've done that, you can then take any other point on the circle and then project those four points through it onto a line, and the cross ratio would still have to stay the same. So I'm going to write some of this out. Um, so the cross ratio A, C, M, X if we project through G onto the circle, it's the cross ratio of B, C, uh, B, and H. And then ultimately we're gonna wanna take another point on the circle and project through those four points onto a line and then the cross ratio would have to stay the same. All right, uh, but before I do that, I'm gonna establish a couple things. So first of all, we know that um, BN is perpendicular to AC. Um, so therefore, um, BH has to be perpendicular to AC. Um, so if you have a line through the center of a circle that um, bisects a chord like BH, um, then uh, where it meets the circle, so at point C, it has to bisect the arc BH. Uh, that's pretty obvious. So I'm gonna write out some of this. Um, so since AN is perpendicular to BH, uh, we have arc BC is equal to arc CH. All right. Um, 
so I'm going to draw in a couple more lines. Um, and so if arc BC is equal to arc CH, um, then that means that BC has to be the angle bisector BDH um, because equal angles intercept equal arcs. So if arc BC is arc CH, then angle BDC has to equal angle CDH. Okay, so I'm going to write that out. Um, and yeah, I let E be the intersection point of BC and BH. So that's going to come in handy later, and I'm going to explain why. Um, but BC is the angle bisector of BDH. All right. So now I'm going to um, try to work on uh, this cross ratio a little bit. Um, so like I said, we started with those four points, AC and X. We projected through the point G onto the circle. Now we're going to want to project through another point on the circle back onto a line and then get the same cross ratio. So the, the other point that I'm going to choose is actually point C. Um, so I want to take these four points D, C, B, and H and project it through point C. So you might ask, how do I project point C through point C? And the answer um, is that it's actually the tangent line through C that is the projection of C through C. Um, but the tangent line to C, that's actually parallel to BH because C is the midpoint of arc uh, BH. So I'm gonna write some of this out. So the tangent to the circle at C is parallel to BH, okay? So now I'm gonna try to project those four points through C and I'm gonna to try to project them on, onto the line BH itself, okay? So um, if I project, uh, if I start with point C and I uh, connect it to D, it meets the segment BH at um, E. If I, if I um, draw the project C through point C, that's the tangent to the circle at point C. And since it's parallel to BH, it meets the line BH at um, the point at infinity. So I've kind of denoted this BH infinity. So informally, that's like a point infinitely far away on the line BH. Um, and then if I project point C through uh, B, well, obviously it just hits um, B on the segment BH. And if I connect it to point H, it just, it's just H on the segment BH. So we have the cross ratio um, DCBH is equal to this cross ratio, uh, E, uh, the point at infinity on BH, uh, B and H. So it's kind of interesting what I did here. I started with four points on a segment and I projected them onto the circle. And then I took those four points on the circle and projected back onto a segment, but through a different point. And the cross ratio has to stay the same all the way through. Um, okay. So uh, we can simplify this a little bit. Um, so if, if we take, if we uh, suppose that this is a point very far away on the line BH, um, B would cut that segment um, into the ratio BE um, divided by some very long distance and H would cut it into HE divided by some very long distance. But if you took the ratio of those two, um, those very long distances, as that point gets farther and farther away, the ratio of those two would have to approach one. And so this would really be um, BE over HE. Um, so I'm gonna write that out. Um, so this cross ratio is BE over HE, and we know that's by transitivity equal to this original um, cross ratio. Um, but I mentioned that DC is the angle bisector of BDH. So BE over HE, we can use uh, the angle bisector theorem, and that has to equal uh, DB over DH, okay? All right, so we're almost there. Um, so there's one final similar triangle um, that if you find it, it sort of cracks open the problem. Uh, so it turns out that uh, triangle DHB is similar to triangle AMB. 
and I'm going to try to show this next uh, through an angle chase. Um, I kind of figured it out by working the problem in reverse and seeing what I would need to show to get C to be the midpoint of AX. Um, but it's not that hard of an angle chase, so I'm going to walk through it. Um, so first I'm going to show angle DHB is equal to angle ABM. Um, so we have angle DHB is equal to angle DGB. Um, but DGB, that's AGM. And ABG is an isosceles triangle because all radii are equal. And so AGM has to equal angle ABM. So we've shown that one of the um, pairs of angles in the two triangles are equal. Um, DHB is equal to ABM. And now I'm going to show um, that angle D BDH is equal to angle uh, BAM. And that's actually, that's not very hard to see because uh, BDH has to be half of the intercepted arc, which is arc BH. But half of that arc, as we mentioned up here, is arc BC. And so that would just be angle BAC. So I'm going to write that out. So angle BDH is half of arc BH. Um, and half of arc BH is just arc BC from above. And then arc BC is just whatever the angle um, from the center of the circle to B and C is. The angle between that is arc BC. So that would be angle BAM. Uh, so now that we've showed angle BDH is angle BAM, um, we've shown that two of the three pairs of angles in the triangles are equal, and so they have to be similar. So triangle BDH has to be similar to triangle BAM. And so um, that means that um, DH over DB, or let, let me see what order I wrote, um, DB over DH has to be AM over AB. Um, but if we look at MA over AB, um, M is the midpoint of AC, um, and, and AB is the same as AC because um, all radii are equal. So MA over AB is equal to MA over AC, and that's a half because M is the midpoint of AC. And so now we're pretty much ready to crack open the problem because if we know MA over AC is a half, then we should have what we need um, to calculate um, this cross ratio. So basically by a big transitivity, we have uh, this cross ratio is equal to this cross ratio, which we showed was equal to this eventually, which we showed was equal to this, which we showed ultimately was equal to half. So ACMX is equal to half, so I'm going to write that out. Um, and then if you um, work it, unravel the definition of the cross ratio, um, that's AM over CM times CX over AX. And AM is equal to CM because M is the midpoint of AC. So AX has to be 2CX, and if AX is 2CX, that's the same as saying that AC is equal to CX, and so C is the midpoint of AX. So this is a really fun problem. Um, I hadn't posted too much projective geometry on my channel in a while, um, so this was a nice sort of going back to that. Um, so um, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, and if you'd like to see more like this, feel free to subscribe to my channel. Thanks, everyone.